This is a video of how our season turned from this. Holy f That current was so strong. Okay. Don't do that by yourself. That was not a good idea. A lot of time alone growing a forest under our keel as we settled into the cruiser community of Georgetown to this. So our time in Georgetown was bad. It was actually really wonderful. We were a part of this like really beautiful community where Everyone was a sailor, everyone was a cruiser, and there was just so much love and help for everyone around. We would just park ourselves at Chat and Chill every single day. Will could play volleyball, I could do yoga, Maddie could play with kids. The problem for us is that, well, we stopped doing the thing we were trying to do. We got so comfortable that it became like, why are we even living on a boat. Um, we're not doing anything on a boat that we couldn't do in a house except being slightly more uncomfortable. And that's when we realized, like, we gotta go. We gotta go. Uh, we gotta push ourselves. We've gotta keep traveling. We've gotta keep adventuring. We've gotta explore more uncomfortable places because at the end of the day, for us, that's what this is all about. And the more comfortable we get, the more complacent we get the scarier all of the adventuring sounds, um, especially with a small child. Yeah, our season totally changed when we got invited down to the Raggeds. talked a little bit in our last episode that we'd uh, had an opportunity to go to the Ragged Islands with a group of other boats. And in the course of our three weeks in the Raggeds, that turned into a group of something like six or seven boats. And I think at one point, 31 or 32 people at Hog Island. So what we did every day was many days, we would move to a new spot. So we would have powwowed the night before and figured out where do we want to go? when's the right time of day. But we'd find a beautiful spot, try to get a little bit secluded, drop anchor. I am making a Bahamian cell reception extender. <laughs> What's that? It's called hiking your phone 70 feet up the mast. What? So primarily you're trying to get weather, right? Usually in the morning, um, all the older kids had school, so Will and I would take Maddie to the beach every day. There was a spearing session, and the whole gang would go off and try to catch dinner. All right, guys, how was your spear? Holy cow! Yeah. Fun evening here on Everyday Saturday. I'm here with this fine gentleman, Will. He's going to explain what's happening here. No more sushi. It's a sushi extravaganza provided for, as usual, by Bill and Nico. That was Jaden in the spring. They caught Jayden the tuna. Jaden in the spring caught the tuna that Bill probably spotted in the ocean and drove the boat towards. <laughs> And then basically every single night, we did some sort of activity. Where are we going, honey? Uh, um, for upstairs. 
Yeah, who, what boat are we going on to? Uh, a sunny day. Do you remember whose birthday it is tonight? Uh, happy Lisa. Melissa. Melissa. Yeah. Guys, they're coming. They're coming. They're coming. We have a birthday coming. Someone's coming for their surprise birthday party. This has never been done on the ocean. A surprise birthday party on the ocean. this magical time of of being together sharing the same experience um, with a group of people traveling who also had kids Personal favorite. I'm gonna name oh, him Cornelius. Yeah. Look how fast this one is! Starting line. Okay. So smart. Yeah. All right, guys, get your hermit crabs and bring them into the center of the circle. ended up um, not spending just the time in the Raggeds, but moving as a pack uh, in a counterclockwise circuit around the rest of the Bahamas through the remainder of the season. So we went from Ragged Islands to Crooked and Acklands, up to Conception and Long Island, Eleuthera, the Abacos, um, all the way back to Florida. It was super fun. We went up to Long Island and went to Dean's Blue Hole. Memorial. Yeah. Never a good sign. Never a good sign. It's a hole at 663 feet deep, which is kind of remarkable because it's only like 100 feet across. 100 feet across, and it comes the oceans around the corner there. There is this 663 foot hole that uh, people try to free dive in, set all sorts of records. Um, so that was fun exploring it and looking into the abyss of the blue hole. What was really fun was going cliff jumping with all the kids. Guys. Yeah. 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 That 
when you're watching from down below, it does not seem that high, but I promise you, when you're at the top looking down, it's like, oh my god, that is like really far. And then we went to the bat caves, which was a real a real treat to to be with our friends and see and see all those crazy crazy creatures. Come right down, we it's done. <laughs> Come on! Got everybody now? Yeah, everybody. Okay. I, my name is Leonard Copper. I'm the tour guy. And this is my wife, Louise. Hello. She Hello. Assist, Hello. assisting. <laughs> All right. Keep you guys in line. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And we have five species of pop stuff left here. But I don't know how many we're going to see today. Wow, wow! Oh, I see him. Right. Oh, 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 it's like Batman. It was just a really collaborative, fun, engaging community. It's what I would imagine, having never owned or lived in a subdivision, it's what I would imagine like living in the perfect subdivision would be like, where you've got all these young families, um, everybody's friends, everybody's hanging out. The guys are like strolling over to the other guy's garage and having a beer uninvited. Um, just a great dynamic that sort of mimicked what I think of as like the best of land life community, except we were just all on boats and we could move our neighborhood whenever we wanted to. Oh yeah. Whoa. Well, how do you feel right now? I feel like my odds of getting a good haircut are definitely higher than <laughs> letting you give it another another crack. So, Britton, have you ever cut anybody's hair before? I just cut Stella's hair, but I have not cut hair. Wasn't that just bangs? Yeah. 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 But she loves them anyway, so. Yeah, well, I'm She's letting you. Good you the curtain bangs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Gonna go check out the handiwork? Yeah. Thank you. Couldn't have layered it, but. Yeah. That's awesome. I feel good about it. Is it fun? Yeah. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. I don't ever have to give you a haircut again. As long as we're buddy boating with everybody. Yeah, I don't think that's probably. Yeah. You're stuck with us now. Fair enough. <laughs> One day never its first babysitting experience on board. Excited. Thank you guys so much. Oh. What, you even made us drinks? Yeah, yeah. we did. So it is going. What kind of service is this? I'll trade you. Wow, we need to step it up on our baby today. <laughs> up so far, so like... Yeah, and despite the idyllicness of the rest of our season, we still had a, a couple of interesting moments on the passage from the Ragged Islands to Crooked Island, which is only a hundred miles or so, just an overnight sail. All of us, a pack of five or so boats, were basically sandwiched between two lines of squalls and there was lightning all over the place. It was very interesting to spend the night watching lightning strike the water all around us and the only time to be able to see the other boats was when the lightning would flash and it was just fun being able to go through this somewhat harrowing thing, but 
you can just chat with your ra your friends on the radio through the whole deal and crack jokes. All right, got the dying gasps of the thunderstorm. Um, now uh, it's about 2 a.m. I just got on officially on watch, although I've been up here. Oh, geez, that was um, I've been up here for the last half hour. I've actually haven't slept at all. Even though it doesn't actually change anything about the safety of sailing in the middle of lightning, it is uh, a reassuring feeling to have your friends nearby dealing with the same stuff that you can you can chat with. And at the very end of the season, um, in the first week of June in the Abacos, uh, of course we get the first tropical event of the year. We actually now have our first official Atlantic name storm of the season, 50 miles per hour. So this is officially now our first name storm of the season. We call it Alex. Our whole group pulled up in a, a little basin just to the the west of Marsh Harbor for several days while the storm rolled over the top of us. And again, it was, you know, it didn't really change anything in terms of the safety of having a, a tropical storm blowing over you, but it was great to be able to bounce ideas around together as we were preparing for the storm. And then even during the storm, you know, we could chat with each other and make sure that everybody's doing well. And actually, I take it back. Had there been actual trouble on any of the boats, um, there would have, no questions asked, been a, a, a rescue team uh, rapidly assembled. So there probably was a little bit of a, a, an added safety buffer by, by having boats together that were watching out for each other and, and in constant communication. So today has been the most fun day. It's our last day hanging out with this gang. Um, so we did a raft up here in Treasure Key. Got one more sail with them. Got to hang out tonight. And then we're headed back to Florida. They're behind us by a couple of weeks, but the gang is no longer going to be together every day, which is a, is a real shame because it's been just the most magical part of this whole trip. Meeting these guys. Woo. And uh, yeah, so it's going to be sad to say goodbye. Pop these lines. I thought you'd never ask. You want us to get off your boat, buddy? Yeah, get out of here, you freeloaders. <laughs> you drink my coffee, you take my water, and you take my woman. <laughs> oh, that Brandon, he's something. Yep. This is friendship. <laughs> you boy. Oh. And here we have it, our last night in the Bahamas for the season. We're doing an impromptu double overnight, leaving the Abacos and heading for St. Augustine. Yeah, it's about 7.30, beautiful evening, and uh, time to get sailing.
Okay, okay, let's go, honey. See it? See how it's opening? 